Hi, this is Scott with 4D Tech. Today we are in a 13 to 15 body style Ford Taurus that came synced to my Ford Touch equipped. We will be upgrading this vehicle to Sync 3 using the Sync 2 to Sync 3 conversion from 4D Tech. To perform this conversion, we need a few basic tools a T20 Torx driver, a 7mm nut driver, and some plastic dash removal tools. All these tools are available on our website for your convenience. Let's get started. First, we need to remove these two pieces of vinyl wrap trim on each side of the console. We'll take one of our dash removal tools and we'll start in between the console and the piece of trim and pry up to help it up and work our way up. And then we'll pull it away from the dash up near the vents. When we flip this around, there's a connector on the back here and you'll see where my finger is. You push in the tab and unplug the connector and we'll set this out of the way. We'll need to do the same thing on this side as well. Instead of disconnecting this connector, we're gonna to wanna to be able to turn the ignition on and off to move the shifter a couple times during the installation. So we'll pry on these tabs all the way around the start stop switch. We'll set this panel out of the way. There's four tabs around there. You just gotta get them kinda all open at once and the switch will pop out and we'll let that switch hang. Next, we need to remove all these seven millimeter screws up through the center of the console. There's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. We'll remove all at once here to get these panels loose as they all overlap each other. With all those screws removed, we'll start to pop the panels up, like the compartment, slide it back a little. The shifter we lift up, and what we'll need to do is, you can hit the start stop switch twice and turn on the ignition without starting the car, and then hold in the brake to push the shifter back. We'll slide this back, and then this coin tray, we pop it off these tabs, push down, swing this out of the way, and where my thumb is, push the tab to disconnect the connector. We'll let that hang in there. Put the shifter back in park, and we can shut the vehicle back off. And we can set these trays back in place for now. Next, we need to remove the two seven millimeters that are down in here, and we'll remove the two up here as well. Next we need to remove this speaker grill up here and we'll get underneath that with a dash tool and pry up and release the clips all the way around. And set that aside. And there's two more seven millimeters here. With those screws out next, we're gonna take one of our dash removal tools and we need to just pop this cover off over here next to the vent because there's a couple screws underneath there.
we'll remove those two screws next. Now we'll come over to this side and we gotta pop this lower dash piece, just pull it away from this little piece right here next to the steering wheel and separate them. There's a single clip that goes into this piece. Then we'll grab a hold of this piece and pull it out from the dash and let it hang. There's another screw right back in here. Next, we need to come over here and we need to remove the same piece of trim that's here on the other side here. To do that, we pull down on this lower dash to release the clips and there's a screw behind it that comes out. And then we pull that plate out as well and let it hang down. Now we can remove this piece of trim around the instrument cluster. We'll just start to pry out on it and pull down. We'll pry out on the other side too. And we're not going to take it completely out, but we just need access to the screw here. And there's a screw here next to the vents that we're going to take out. With all those screws out, this panel will now be loose and pull away from the dash. In order to get it past the screen here, we gotta kind of pull out here and pull the vent extension by. And we'll take it, swing it around, and there's a single connector right here with a clip on the bottom where my finger is, push the clip in and disconnect the connector. Next, we need to remove the four screws that retain the screen and sync module in the dash. Now all these screws that we've taken out, don't worry because they're all the same exact screw, so it doesn't matter, um, you know, where they went. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll go back in whatever location, so you don't have to worry about separating them by where they came out of. We'll pull the screen out, we'll spin it around, and we'll disconnect this USB connector by pushing the tab with our thumb, and disconnect this main connector by pushing this little lock in front of the gray lever, pull the gray lever all the way towards us till the connector releases. Now what we do need to do is transfer the brackets on our current screen coming out onto the new screen and module from 4D Tech. This is easiest to do on a soft surface, uh, on a table or so. Uh, you know, for the sake of this video, we're going to set a cloth up in this opening and work here. We'll use our T20 Torx and take out these screws. And then make sure that your new screen is facing the same way so that you're not trying to put the brackets on backwards. Okay, we'll set our screen with our brackets aside momentarily. Next, we need to install the SYNC 3 antenna. Um, your current antenna, even if you had navigation, does not work with SYNC 3. That's why we have to use the one that came with the kit. Um, even if you go with the non-navigation version of the SYNC 3 kit, you still need the antenna as it is used to uh, set the clock and for 911 assist and also the built-in compass. So we'll get our GPS antenna out. It includes an adhesive pad and some alcohol wipes. 
We'll open up an alcohol wipe. And we're actually going to place the antenna right here. Um, it's plenty, uh, plenty far forward because of the slope of the windshield and it's just directly under the speaker grill. Um, so it'll be easy to, easy to install. So we'll clean that area with our alcohol swab and we'll clean the back of the antenna as well. We'll peel our adhesive pad, stick it to the back of our antenna and peel the other side. You'll want to make sure the alcohol is dry. And we'll stick the antenna right there. Doesn't matter how the antenna faces like this, but the top where it says GPS or the top plastic of the antenna must face up. So we're gonna tuck this back in the opening and we have our connector here. Now we'll install the SYNC 3 screen. We'll connect that antenna wire that we just ran. And we'll plug in the USB cable into the black port. And then the main connector, make sure the lever is all the way towards us push that in and push the lever till it clicks to lock it in. Now we'll set this in the opening where the old screen came out. Now we need to replace the four screws we took out earlier. Now with the four screws in, we'll replace the bezel we took out. Now this vehicle happens to have the Sony sound bezel. Doesn't matter which trim level you have, as long as you have the SYNC 2 system, you can upgrade it to SYNC 3 with our upgrade. We'll reconnect that connector, swing this around. We gotta kinda pull out on this instrument cluster trim and then we'll push on the duct work to push it back in there. And we'll ease this back in. And it should just kind of drop into place. You shouldn't have to force it. Now we'll replace these two screws, these two screws and the two behind the bezel here along with the two below the vent. Now we'll replace this panel that we took off earlier and the speaker grill. And then we'll reinstall the trim around the instrument cluster. You just gotta just realign it how it came out. The clips will all line up, push it back into place and we'll reinstall the screw that was back in here. Put this cover piece back in. Make sure you pull down on the lower panel for the clip to clear. And then we'll reinstall the piece on the left hand side of the steering wheel along with the screw that was underneath it by pulling out on the panel, snapping it in and reinstalling the screw. And then snap the lower dash panel back in. Next, we need to turn the ignition back on by double pressing without pressing the brake. And we gotta slide everything back here. We'll move the shifter back because we need to reinstall this coin tray. S snap the connector back in. 
slide the coin tray back in place, rear line these tabs up here, put the shifter plate back in, we can shut off the ignition, put this plate back in, and we need to reinstall all these screws that we took out earlier. We also need to make sure when we are putting screws back in earlier, it's a lot of screws, we missed the two up below the vent. So Next we need to put these trim panels back in. We'll plug this connector back in. Snap the front and just snap it all the way back. We'll snap back in the start stop switch. Just make sure it's right side up, the lettering's facing the right way. It'll snap right back in. And then snap that back in underneath the vent. And then snap it all the way back. Next, we need to change out the current hub for the SYNC 3 compatible one. First, we pop the face off of the hub using one of our dash removal tools. And then you can use a Torx driver or a straight tool, put it in one of these slots, turn it sideways to grip, and pull out on the hub. Once we pull out on the hub, we need to disconnect the two connectors. We'll squeeze the clip on the back of the USB cable there to pull it out, and there's a little clip on the top here that we're pushing with our thumbnail, and pulling that out as well. We have the power adapter for the new SYNC 3 hub that's included in the kit. We'll plug that into the connector like this. And now we have the mounting adapter plate and the SYNC 3 compatible hub. And we slide the hub into the mounting plate so it clicks in place. And now we'll reconnect the USB connector and plug the power connector in. And then tuck the wiring into the opening and slide the plate in and snap it into place. With everything installed, we'll fire up the vehicle. And let the new SYNC 3 system load up. You see, we now have SYNC 3 installed in this vehicle. It may take a few moments for everything to load the first time. And now you see that we have SYNC 3 with navigation as well. We'll touch the navigation icon, and you can see that we have the maps. So that's what it takes to install the SYNC 2 to SYNC 3 conversion in the 13 to 15 Ford Taurus. I'm Scott with 4D Tech. Thank you for checking out our video.